Welcome to the ladies room. My name is Judy McDowell and today my guest is Jonathan Nash Glynn who is the founder of Wings Over Haiti which um, as you probably remember when they had the earthquake in Haiti Jonathan loaded up his plane with medical supplies and all kinds of things and he could fly into small towns and really do some uh, really give a lot of help to the people there. So hello, Jonathan, how are you? Hi, how are you doing, Judy? Great to be I'm, here. I'm good, I'm good. So you built the first school right after the earthquake and that school now is going full bore. The kids are so happy. And for the last three or four years, you've been working on a new school in Rankeet in right. Haiti, just way up in the mountains. So, um, Tell me, uh, it, it's so remote. Did COVID have like zero effect up there? Well, we didn't really have any, COVID wasn't a big factor in, in any problems. We were lucky because uh, before some major turmoil and domestic unrest, we were able to get supplies and build a school there uh, early on uh, before COVID and before uh, the unrest that is occurring there now. So we were able to start a new school and things are going pretty well up there now. So COVID's not really a factor because we are about six hours from Port-au-Prince and we're in the mountains. You can only get there through a dirt landing strip. And um, no, Nobody goes there. Yeah, well, it's hard to get in there yeah. and have a gas shortage now. So. Things are going very well. I mean, we want to expand the school this year. Uh, it's going to be an issue, uh, you know, the availability of products and building supplies and also with gasoline to be able to get trucks and um, builders up there to expand their school. But, um, you know, we're optimistic. We've been working with this now for 11 years and we'll be able to get through it. Yeah, well, luckily you had a good start and... Uh because this has, well, especially now with the current unrest, it must be very dangerous to, to travel to Haiti and through Haiti right now. Yeah, unfortunately, I haven't been down there in a year. So we're mostly Skyping and phone, making phone calls, but we have a full staff down there that's operating very well. We're completely on top of what we're doing and I just can't wait to get down there. But right now, after the assassination of the president, and the domestic unrest, um, it's really unwise for you know, myself or even other Haitians to go down there without a risk of um, getting killed. Yeah. So you have a new director for the school and she's uh, really moving it right along. I, you sent us some pictures that are really remarkable. Yeah, we have this, a woman, Fab Nice, who's, uh, we waited for a few years at, uh, you know, we were just waiting and waiting to see how we could pull together uh, a director uh, and someone with a uh, curriculum-based uh, experience that we found in Port-au-Prince. And uh, Fabnice was interested in coming back to Pignon, which is an adjacent town where she grew up. And so it all worked out really well. So now she's directing uh, about eight other teachers now. And uh, we have four, three full classrooms going um, for our first 51 children. And our goal is to get up to about 400 children over the next four years. Wow, there's so many kids there. They must be so happy. Um, let's so show, so, uh, uh, show the picture of the children around the table. Um, and then if we could screen share the other pictures and then you could tell us about them, that would be great because the old kitchen was just a shack with like a, a big boiling cauldron in the middle of it, right? Right. And they have a brand new kitchen, so it's really remarkable. 
Well, let, yeah, let me remind you, just to even build a kitchen or a school building up there, such a difficult task. Uh, it takes a lot of time and effort. So it's a real accomplishment to even be able to get the supplies up there and have it be built. So we're really happy about that. Huh. So, Riley, can we screen share some pictures or, or can we see that big picture of the, the kids at the table? Um, well, whenever they come up, we'll talk about them. So, um, you have uh, the new kitchen, the new director, you have a guard, you have six teachers. Um, and we have, and a, uh, we have real a full, bathrooms. We have a full building with four classrooms. One of them we're using for the director's office now. Uh -huh. uh, and a room to expand that building as well. And then we have a separate area for the bathrooms. So we have outdoor separate areas for bathrooms and, and the kitchen. Um, I mean, we have a lot of work to do, but I would say, you know, it's very exciting to actually have our first 51 kids there. It makes all the difference. Yeah. It makes all the hard work sort of like come alive. And then you remind yourself why you spent the past four years trying to raise the money and trying to get people to the site. And we have a beautiful uh, earthquake resistant building to build. Front yeah. on. And we, we have a plan for a whole, for the 400 kids that we have a, an overall plan for another three or four buildings over time. And uh, I'm confident that we're gonna do it now. It's really very exciting. Huh. And how do you get school books in there for the kids? How do you, how do you get all the supplies that you need? Well, Does Amazon yeah. deliver in Haiti? What, excuse me? Does Amazon deliver in Haiti? <laughs> <laughs> I wish they did. That would really be a coup. Yeah. So we, we, uh, Babnice knows exactly what books she need for the level and experience of each of the students. So she gives us an outline of what she needs and then we get it from Port-au-Prince and it's, uh, it's trucked up to us. Books are fairly expensive and, um, you know, it's been working out so far that we can get it from Port-au-Prince. So Rankeet is about four to six hour drive from Port-au-Prince or maybe an hour flight. But the flight's a little bit hairy and it lands over the mountains into a dirt strip. So it's not something we can sustain constantly. Yeah. Well, the benefit this year for Wings Over Haiti is uh, at the airport, like it was two years ago, we couldn't do anything last year because of COVID, but um, you expect a really good turnout this year. Yes, uh, I'm really excited. I mean, I, th I think a lot of people are ready to go out, be outside on airplanes and you know, all their friends. Uh, you know, we have a lot of activities, a lot of people that are generously donating their services. Uh, and two years ago, I mean, it was a rocking party. I mean, people said it was right. the Hamptons. Um, it was and uh, what we would plan on living up to that and exceeding that this year. Um, yeah. People are ready for a good time and it's for a great cause. And we're also highlighting our buddy system. We're going to have booths of people and it would show that you can essentially sponsor a child for $1.50 a day. Um, and the child will get back to the sponsor over time. And you'll watch the progress of each child um, given a, a buddy system that we'll have. So you'll be a buddy. So we're going to be highlighting sort of enlisting people to join us uh, for that program, which I think will sustain the school and build the community, not only there, but here with people that want to support destitute kids that have a real future with the Wings Over Haiti School. Yeah, destitute is putting it lightly. I mean, they have nothing, the, the, the children in Haiti. Um, so the benefit is August 7th, Saturday, August 7th from five to eight at East Hampton Airport and the parking you're going to, there's going to be parking in a big field sort of uh, to the north of the hangars. Yeah, we have a big field and we have golf carts. We have a lot of attendance and support and help. Uh, once people come from the air, from the, their parking and get to our, the, the four hangars in the area where we're having the party, uh, there will be drinks and uh, tons of food and entertainment. 
Uh, we have a surprise uh, coming. I guess it's not a surprise if I tell you, but we have a surprise Haitian band that's going to be showing up as well. Yeah. Uh, and it's going to be, you know, it'll be the again the party of the year, no doubt about it. And Coco Myers is going to do a whole art auction with uh, looks like beautiful works of art got this year. And uh, there'll be a raffle. We'll be selling mm -hmm. raffles like a Chinese auction. And we've got great prizes for that. And we have interesting vendors that are giving out free products like kombucha. Right. Kombucha. Charity George Robinson giving out kombucha. It's delicious. It's delicious. So, uh, so tell me, Jonathan, how is this year for you not being able to go there? Thank goodness we raised that money two years ago because right. they, they had money to work with and the pandemic didn't affect any of that. It just kept, they just kept moving along. Well, we uh, like to, for money we have, we spend it for the school as soon as possible. And we're lucky that we were able to get through the pandemic. So we're, we're counting on raising a lot of money this year to get us through the next year and to, not only to, to pay for the medical supplies, food and education of each child and the new children, because we expand our, well, our, our game plan is that we add a grade a year. So we're constantly expanding. So, um, you know, the benefit will pay for the, the basic operating expenses and hopefully we'll have money left to build another school uh, and make new contacts and expand our community through the buddy system. Yeah, will you will you keep building schools up in the mountains because there's less red tape and less danger? Well, I mean, our first school was in a, is in a, a completely difficult and dangerous area, but They're it's all friends. walled off. There's guards, and the kids are thrilled and delighted to be there. But it's a very you know pure environment. We we have a we have a lot more leeway in the mountains. It's not as dangerous. And at this time in my life, I, I kind of feel more relaxed that I don't want to put myself in harm's way. And I think we we have a very stable uh, situation there that uh, encourages uh, increased population of the school and, and, and longevity. You know, I think we're in good shape. Did you bring in a well for, for good water there? I mean, you have bathrooms, so I'm assuming that you brought in water. Well, yeah, we bring in water. We do have a well there. Uh, we don't have the resources right now to really kind of explore that well and do a water filtration system, but that's hopefully next year, that'll be one of our major projects. So we can share well of water with the students instead of take, bringing it from the outside and also give the water to the community and the parents of our kids. Yeah, is it a farming community? Yeah, Rankeet is a farming community. It's a limited farming community. It's not like what you think, but it's in a sort of a subsistence farming community. Yeah, it's like arid there, right? The, 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 the ground. Yeah, I mean, I don't think they're doing major exporting. I think they trade among each other. Uh, and it's really how much rains they have and how well the crops go. We're learning about that too, and we hope to help them more uh, with, with that as well. I mean, our long-term goal is that there's certain products in Haiti that be like coffee and vitivir, and we would like to do like a cottage industry with our community to help take the profits, put it back into some sort of a, an endowment for the school. But these, are, these things happen slowly and we're happy with where we are now. The benefit that on August 7th, and by the way, they can get tickets from wingsoverhaiti.net. Wingsoverhaiti.net is where you can buy tickets. And so the money that we get from that, you know, we will move it, be moving forward. We have a lot of projects that we need to take care of. Yeah, well, one thing that's really important for people to know is that 100% of the money goes to Haiti and to the school. That's um, true. Yeah, other charities are a little dicey that way. Um, after the earthquake, Haiti was promised for $14 billion, right, from all these countries from all over the world. And only about four billion showed up, and then that all kind of disappeared. I mean, it's uh, the country's quite in turmoil, and and uh, and the government was corrupt. Has it stabilized at all since the president was assassinated? Well, I, it seems to be not stable right now. But you know, I have to just remind you and the viewing audience that 
you know, we are auton autonomous. We get support from the government, whatever it is, even if it's yeah. uh, unstable. But to, to build schools is not something that they're going to discourage under any level. And, right. you know, we're in all the resources uh, we, we keep to ourselves and we make sure that children are well fed, again, medical attention. And then, you know, we watch them grow educationally and after school, they're doing as well as, if not better than uh, kids in our school system now. I mean, they love being in school. They work very hard. And, you know, eventually we introduce standardized tests and to make sure that they are doing well. So these are kids that go home and sleep on dirt floors and don't have electricity. They're doing just as well as the students here. So we hope that the, our kids will be going to college and make a big influence on, on Haiti, uh, as well as the lives of, of patients in the rural communities that have nothing. Yeah, true. And the new director of the school, she has, uh, she ran a Montessori school. It's kind of the Montessori um, method. Of going there. Yes. For now, yeah. it's very good. I mean, we need to analyze it and make sure that it's rigorous enough to meet the standards so that our kids will eventually go to colleges internationally. Um, yeah. So for now, it's, 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 it's the perfect uh, way to jumpstart a new school, that curriculum, you know. And how about you personally? How has this past year been for you? Well, I mean, it was just my past year, a year and a half, it's been like for everyone else. You know, I missed my friends. We were all kind of in lockdown. Um, I have, I'm an artist and a painter, so I've painted like crazy. <laughs> I had certainly had enough time to do it. Now yeah. I'm, trying to, I'm counting for all the work that I've done to try to get out there and have some people see my work. Yeah. But, you know, between painting and work over Haiti, um, I was able to keep busy and not, not so lonely, not so, you know, I we all experienced something. I mean, it's funny with the COVID, I mean, it was a very productive time, but it was also, you know, like a very jarring time for everybody. Sure. Yeah, I took a peek at, at when I was at the meeting at your house the other day, the studio, and it's amazing. You're doing very large works and they're very beautiful. You're gonna oh. need, you're gonna need a, a big van to get them out of your house. I don't even know if you've got a door big enough to get them through. <laughs> well, I've, been doing, I've been doing them in sections. So uh -huh. uh, and get them out. I'm not, I okay. haven't completely. <laughs> Have you been doing any sculptures? No sculptures, no. The sculptures in your garden are very beautiful. So Riley, can we show those pictures? Is that possible? I would love to show the people the pictures and the invitation. Um, perhaps, they were coming up when we, we were setting up and I don't know why they're not coming up now, but... Um, but they'll probably roll them in. So I don't know, maybe we should end the show a little early. Um, what else can we say well, about I can the- explain some pictures uh, that they'll be able to see if it's rolled into this video. One of them is a before and after of kitchens, which shows you how incredible, uh, how incredibly primitive it was just to get some food for the kids. And then we built a kitchen. So these are big formidable accomplishments. Yeah, I'll say. Yeah, yeah, nice bathrooms for the kids and a school class so joyous. You'll see pictures of kids. They parents will dress up these kids with the best clothing or maybe the yeah, only good Sunday, their Sunday. Yeah. As they're so proud to have hope for their children that mm. they they take the schools extremely seriously and the kids just love it. So you'll see a picture, a couple pictures of the kids in the classrooms too. I think you know, you'll see that. But the most remarkable picture I think show the difference is the picture of the shed that was the kitchen. Is it's it's like how one of the walls is falling in, the roof is half ripped off. It's like if you think of a shed, this is like the shed from hell. And then it's dark inside. There's no light and a big cauldron in the middle. You expect like three witches there, like saying you know, to throw a boil and bubble. But, uh, and now it's this great little building with two doors and, and counters and. Yeah, it's just wonderful. Is it, did, I mean, a lot, of, a lot of the kids live in houses that look like those sheds. Oh yeah. When the rains come, they all 
come down and they have to rebuild them with the shards of material and scattered pieces of metal that they can use for a roof. I mean, we're talking about extremely poor people. Um, poor. You, know, you know, the average working person, if they're lucky to get $6 a day, um, that could keep them alive. Yeah. Yeah, but and, and and there's really delightful people, and they're so proud of even their little shack. They they sweep all the dirt all around it, so it's all clean all around it, and and uh, and nine people can be sleeping in one tiny little bedroom with the beds all pushed together, and they have to cook outside. They have like a lean to right to cook outside, and uh, outhouses, and that's how they live. Very tough. They're wonderful people, yeah. um, for the most part. And, um, you know, it's only two hours or two and a half hours flight from New York. It's like only, you know, a few hundred miles from Miami. And it's like, it's Being an unbelievable experience that in our hemisphere, with all the wealth and opportunity that we have in the United States and adjacent countries, that there could even tolerate this kind of this kind of mass poverty that's just beyond beyond belief. I mean, there's a lot for it, and it's going to take a lot of work. But I think that through education, that's like a small foot in the door to find some clarity and hope for the for the children as well as for the country in the long run. And that's our goal at Wings Over Haiti. So if, when I, I might just end by saying that I would love it if people come to the benefit. And they could go to wingsoverhaiti.net. And it's August 7th, so get your tickets now. Right. And it's really important for us, and I promise you a good time. I think you'll have a great party if, if you come to this benefit. Yeah. We, we had a wonderful time the last time we did it. And people were dancing and strolling around and looking at art and happy to win the raffle tickets. They're, as I said, we have great prizes, and um, it's it's a wonderful afternoon. So hopefully, everyone Buzz five to seven or five to eight at night. Yeah, five to eight. Eight, eight, eight. August seven. Yes. Okay, I have two people from Haiti visiting me right now. I mean, they might pop in to say hello, or they might not, because uh, <laughs> Patricia said, "Oh, let me go get ready." Like she had to get dressed up, to say hello to you, but. Um, they, uh, they are so grateful for everything you're doing in Haiti. And they're so excited about the benefit. Um, and I know that everyone that came to the benefit the last time had a great time. Yes, yeah, that, that's true. So I hope yeah. to see you there. I, unfortunately, Judy, I have to get going. Okay. But say hi to your friends, your Haitian friends. For me. Coming in. Patricia, come here, say hello. Say hello. <laughs> Um, Jonathan has to be going. Just a look at her. She got all dressed up. That's so funny. Come here, you. Come here, you. My cute, my cute little Haitian Hello. friend. Hi. Look down. Oh my god, I love the paintings. Yeah, he's a wonderful artist. So yeah, here she is. And Jay. Oh, okay. Jay went yeah. to play. Oh, we went to play golf. Yeah. Okay, so we're really excited about the benefits. So excited. You're gonna get all your friends. Yeah, to they're come. coming. They're coming from New York. Yeah. They come from. Yes, it's so Bring as super many hot. people as you can. We have a lot of room. Oh, is it where? Is it at the, it's at the airport? At the airport. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. great. August. Okay. Thank you. So we'll let you go, Jonathan. Okay. Thank you. Really nice Thank to meet you. everyone for watching the ladies' room. Um, remember, ladies, give yourself lots of room. Room Thank for love. Thank you for everything for Haiti. Room Thank for you. fun. Haiti strong. Room to go. Room to go. <laughs> room to come and dance at the Haitian That's benefit. That's right. That's right. All right. <laughs> Signing off Thank for this you. week. Thank you, Thank you for watching. Thank you. Thanks, Jonathan. Bye bye. Thanks. Breathe in. Breathe in. Take
couldn't stop.